Just claim menopause, and you can skip work and house chores. I couldn't hide my fury at his insensitive words. Ever since I passed 50, I started experiencing physical changes. It's been two years since I was diagnosed with menopause-related issues. These past two years, I've battled dizziness, heart palpitations, hot flashes, and more. I'm under treatment, but it's just managing symptoms, not a cure. Living together, my husband has never tried to understand my condition. Dizziness? Tiredness? Back pain? That's just getting older. Everyone goes through it. Then they label it something grand like menopause and take off work to lie in bed all day. Must be nice. That's what my husband hurled at me as I lay there unable to stand up due to dizziness. The decision to take a leave of absence from work as advised by my doctor was maliciously construed by my husband as an overreaction to a trivial illness. He's repeatedly berated and sneered at me for my persistent illness, but today was different. He looked down at me with utter disdain and let out a mocking laugh. If you have the energy to show off how sick you are, at least do some housework, the kind a wife is supposed to do. I'm Jane, 52 years old. I live with my husband Kyle who is three years older than me. We met in our late 20s through a mutual friend and quickly hit it off. Our relationship progressed smoothly and we got married in our early 30s. While we had our fair share of minor arguments, Kyle was always kind, and we managed to lead a peaceful life, both of us working hard. We don't have children, but I believe we've supported each other well and gotten along fine as a couple. However, a few years ago, a significant change began to affect our marriage. Um, I'd been working as a full-time employee even after getting married, but currently I'm on leave. The reason is health issues. To be more specific, I started experiencing symptoms of menopause just before my 50s, which led to frequent health problems. At first, it was primarily irregular menstrual cycles, sudden hot flashes, and increased fatigue. But as time passed, the symptoms worsened with intense heart palpitations and sleepless nights. Eventually, it even affected my mental health, causing irritability and prolonged bouts of depression without any apparent reason. Menopause can cause various symptoms for about a decade, from premenopause to postmenopause. I had heard about it, but experiencing it myself was far more challenging than ever. My symptoms were particularly severe, and on my family's advice, I started visiting the hospital. But there's been no cure in sight. The doctors told me that menopause can have various symptoms, so there's no specific cure-all medication, only treatment for the symptoms. I've been using prescribed medication and herbal remedies tailored to my severe symptoms, but there's no complete recovery, only temporary relief. As it became too difficult to continue working, I decided to take a leave of absence when I turned 50 two years ago. My company allows a leave of absence for up to three years, and soon I'll have to decide whether to return to work or resign. I don't want to quit my job, but with no signs of my symptoms easing, I find myself frustrated by the possibility of having to consider resignation. But if I quit my job now, I'm not sure how Kyle will react. At first, when I started suffering from menopause, Kyle was concerned and attentive. He was never one to take the lead in household chores, but he used to care for me when I was unwell. I thought he was a kind person. But as soon as he realized my health issues might be prolonged, he started looking at me with annoyance. When I discussed taking a temporary leave from work with Kyle, he wasn't pleased. Jane, I don't really understand your health issues. But are they really bad enough to need to go on leave? You're not just planning to slack off and laze around at home, are you? I was truly shocked when he said that. Men also experience menopause, but Kyle, despite having a chronic condition, has rarely been unwell. He always took care to prevent his condition from worsening, maintaining good health. So he probably sees me with my persistent discomfort as lazy. Despite explaining my symptoms to him, he seemed uncomprehending, saying, So what's the improvement plan? If one method doesn't work, you should look for another. Why do you keep saying it's not getting better? If your treatment isn't working, find another one. Continuing to work in my current state is challenging. When I expressed my wish to go on leave until my health stabilizes, Kyle predictably was furious. However, after I told him that not only my boss, but also my colleagues and juniors had asked me to take a break, he reluctantly agreed. I resolved to do more household chores while not working. 
but there are times when I suddenly feel too ill to even get out of bed. Standing brings dizziness and even sitting triggers unrelenting hot flashes and sweating. When I try to vacuum despite the pain, I'm hit with merciless backaches. I've resorted to taking medication and enduring it, doing chores whenever I'm able to move, but Kyle still didn't understand. You're still not better. What's the point of going to the doctor? As expected, he gradually started treating me coldly. You know, you shouldn't be so dependent all the time. If you're at home on leave, why don't you finish all the chores during the day? It's not like you're sick from morning to night. Coming home to no greeting. Dinner that's just cut and heated up? What are you even doing at home? Kyle complained more than once or twice upon returning from work. His sighs and exasperated demeanor were a shock to me. On weekends, when he's at home, and I'm lying down because I feel unwell. He has yelled at me, How long are you going to lie there? At least run the laundry. Kyle's sarcasm and complaints have been increasing day by day, with no words of comfort or concern. While his harsh attitude hurts me, I also find myself growing more anxious, wondering when my symptoms will end, if they ever will. Thankfully, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, who live in the same town, understand my condition and often offer their advice. My mother-in-law is over 80, yet strong and lively, always speaking energetically. My father-in-law has passed away, and she lives with my sister-in-law, Amy, and her husband. It was my mother-in-law and sister-in-law who first suggested I go to the hospital and advised me to consider a leave of absence if my condition worsened. I'm truly grateful to them for being so understanding and supportive about my menopause symptoms. One day, Kyle said we're having a dinner party at our house next weekend for mom's birthday. In Kyle's family, it's been a tradition since he was young to have grand dinner parties for family birthdays. Since marrying him, I've attended these celebrations every year. Some years we'd go out for dinner, and other years we'd have a party at his parents' house. This year, it was decided to hold his mother's birthday celebration at our place. Naturally, I was expected to handle the cooking. On the day of, his mother and sister would come over in the evening, and his sister's husband couldn't join due to work commitments. Make sure you're in good health on the day, Kyle said, glaring at me with a stern look. I won't tolerate it if it's like last year again. I understand, I replied, having no choice but to nod in front of Kyle's demands. The reason was that last year, during his mother's birthday, I was unwell and had to miss the party at his parents' house. Kyle seemed to believe he was embarrassed by my absence. I vividly remember being harshly scolded by him when he returned home, a memory that still brings me to tears. So this time I want to avoid such a situation, and I'm determined to follow Kyle's instructions. To keep my health in check for the day of the dinner party. Still, if my symptoms could be controlled just by wanting them to be better, I wouldn't have been suffering like this for years. Hoping for even a slight improvement, I began preparing little by little. My mother-in-law will be turning 85 on her next birthday, wanting to show my gratitude for all the kindness she has shown me over the years. I resolved to put extra effort into preparing everyone's dinner that day. Inviting the in-laws over meant there was a lot to do beyond just preparing the meal. Knowing Kyle has a bit of a vain side, he wouldn't be satisfied unless the house was cleaned from top to bottom. So, while keeping an eye on my condition, I spent several days thoroughly cleaning the house. Kyle lounged in the living room without offering any help with the chores, a situation I've become accustomed to. While some younger men nowadays do participate in household tasks, in Kyle's generation, housework is considered the wife's job. Especially since he thinks I just laze around at home all day, I never expected him to help. I finished shopping for the dinner party menu the day before and went to bed early. I prayed for mild symptoms as I closed my eyes. However, on the day of the dinner party, I was unfortunately plagued with severe headaches and dizziness right from the morning. As I tried to get out of bed, my vision blurred and I had to close my eyes. Then, I heard the sound of intense heart palpitations and was hit with a headache as if being struck on the head. This has been one of the worst, the worst episodes recently. Still, I forced myself out of bed only to hear a loud sigh from Kyle above me. 
Realizing I was unable to prepare breakfast, he grabbed his wallet and phone and headed for the door. Then bluntly he said, I'm gonna eat. I feel sick being around you, so I'll go to my mom's place early. Make sure dinner is ready when I get back, and left the house. Indeed, today Kyle was supposed to pick up his mother and sister, but dropping by so early in the morning would surely be inconvenient for them. His unkind words hurt, but I couldn't stay down for long. I managed to stomach some jelly drinks and take my medication, lying down in the living room, until the symptoms subsided. However, my condition hardly improved by the afternoon. The headache eased thanks to the medicine, but getting up caused dizziness and unsteadiness. I needed to start preparing dinner, but I could barely move. Alternating between standing in the kitchen for short periods and taking breaks, time was quickly passing by. Feeling at my limit, I tried calling Kyle, but there was no answer. So I sent him an email, but no reply came. It was already 5 p.m. and everything was still half done, when Kyle returned home with his mother and the others. As Kyle entered the living room, he saw me sitting in the kitchen, looking puzzled. You didn't even come to greet us when my mother and the others arrived. Is dinner ready? Nothing seems to be set up, he remarked, leaving me speechless. The rice was cooked, and I had made a simple salad with some leafy greens and tomatoes, but that was about all the preparation I had managed. Fearing another scolding, I felt my heart race and my breathing grow labored. But I decided to apologize and tell the truth. Honey, I'm sorry. This is all I could manage. I'm sorry, but can we order something delicious for the main course? At that, Kyle's face turned red and his demeanor changed entirely. Don't make a fuss about being sick at a time like this. This dinner is important and my mother was really looking forward to it. And yet, you're embarrassing me again. Just like last year, Kyle was furious, scolding me harshly. It's not like that. I'm not trying to make an appeal about being sick. You are. It's pathetic that at your age, you can't manage your own health. You need to realize that your issues are a burden on us. Kyle didn't listen to my words and continued to accuse me. Then why didn't you answer the phone? I sent a message saying we could eat out. I even sent another email just three minutes ago asking to order takeout. Why do you insist on eating at home when you do nothing? My frustration exploded and I shouted back loudly. Every word I spoke felt like my head was being hit with a metal bat. My vision was so blurred that I couldn't even see Kyle's face properly. I couldn't hear anything over my own voice and racing heart. And I was sweating profusely, feeling hot. I regretted a bit that the symptoms I had been managing with medication were now all coming out strongly. But I couldn't keep silent about it to Kyle. When my vision finally cleared up a bit and I caught a glimpse of Kyle, he was standing there with his mouth open in a dumbfounded way. Then as our eyes met, he turned red, glared at me and pointed his finger accusingly. What kind of tone is that? Pretending to be sick and staying cooped up at home and not even doing the household chores? And on top of that, you're the worst kind of woman. On top of that, you lash out when called out. You're the worst kind of woman. Such an unfit wife. I'm sick of supporting you. If you can't do the housework, then we're getting a divorce. He shouted loud enough for the neighbors to hear. No matter how desperately I appealed to him, Kyle showed no sign of understanding. Having been together for so many years, the ease with which he suggested divorce made me feel miserable and I was on the verge of tears. Divorce seemed the only option. As I was about to voice my agreement, I heard light footsteps. But Kyle, in his rage, probably didn't notice. What's the big deal with menopause anyway? Tiredness. Stiff shoulders, that's normal for our age. Uh, dizziness and headaches can't get that bad, even with medication. You just want to lie in bed all day, don't you? As Kyle spat these words at me, someone tapped him on the shoulder from behind. It was Kyle's sister, more furious than I'd ever seen her. She swung her right hand as soon as Kyle turned around and incredibly struck him hard across the face. Kyle, hit by a powerful right straight from a 60-year-old woman, fell to the floor, looking up at his sister in disbelief, not understanding what had just happened. Hey sis, what was that for all of a sudden? Kyle, rubbing his cheek in confusion, was met with her piercing glare. Then she shouted, and what about you? How dare you talk like that? Have you been treating Jane like this for years? 
Judging her illness without being a doctor and verbally abusing your wife, you should be ashamed. Kyle tends to put on a good face in front of his family, never treating me so poorly. Even when I was suffering from dizziness and he was looking down on me with contempt, as soon as his sister came to visit, Kyle would show concern for my health and even make coffee himself. I had talked to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law about my illness, but I never discussed Kyle's behavior. They were sympathetic, but I feared they might harbor ill will against me if I spoke ill of Kyle, their blood relative. They hadn't seen his harsh treatment towards me, so they might not believe it. Even if they did believe and sympathized, expressing their concerns to Kyle, I was afraid of how he might retaliate against me. But, seeing my sister-in-law's action now, I might have been wrong in my thinking. What's the big deal? Today is Mom's birthday party, and I wanted to make it enjoyable. And it's her fault for ruining the dinner party by not cooking. Isn't she the one to blame? Kyle stood up pointing at me and continuing his accusations. Then, his mother, who had come into the living room with his sister, glared at him. Are you saying that Jane ruined the dinner party? That's, that's just your personal opinion, isn't it? From what I heard? Jane did her best to prepare despite feeling unwell. She even contacted you to change the location or order takeout because it seemed she couldn't manage in time. I don't appreciate being entertained by someone who's unwell and forced to do so. And frankly, I'm not at all happy being entertained by a son who just dumps everything on his sick wife and complains. My mother-in-law said this firmly to Kyle. Then his sister added, Did you leave Jane alone, knowing she was unwell, and just come to our house? I, I mean, there's nothing I could do. There are plenty of things you could do, like helping with, with the housework or being concerned about our health. You just found it troublesome when Jane started feeling unwell, right? Cornered by his sister's remarks, Kyle was at a loss for words. It seemed that my sister-in-law had told Kyle to be more considerate towards me since I started feeling unwell. But judging by Kyle's usual behavior, it was clear he hadn't taken her words to heart. Why do you and mom always take her side? Menopause isn't really a disease, right? Getting tired easily or having palpitations? That happens to everyone as they age. It's just lazy women giving themselves an illness to pretend they're sick. Kyle still tried to justify himself. His sister sighed and began to explain. You might not know this, Kyle, but I too suffered from severe menopausal symptoms. It only settled down recently, but it was so bad I quit my job 10 years ago. Calling a disease that made me quit my job, not really an illness, really. Eh? Hearing his sister's words, Kyle just stood there, dumbfounded. When I first started showing symptoms of menopause, I talked to my sister-in-law about it. She told me that she experienced menopausal symptoms at the same age as me, and eventually had to quit her job after initially taking a temporary leave. She didn't want to quit, but she needed to prioritize her health. After showing no signs of improving, she consulted with her family and made that decision. I knew that my sister-in-law had quit her job around the age of 50. But I didn't know the reason until she told me herself. Now that I think about it, I realize I hadn't seen her during that time. We mainly communicated through emails, and I only learn now that we hadn't met because she was too unwell. It was really tough back then. I even thought it might never get better. But my husband Jack told me to quit my job and take the time off. But my husband Jack told me to quit my job and take the time to rest, she said. Jack is my sister-in-law's husband, Jack, who is five years younger than my sister-in-law. He couldn't join the dinner party this time as his job involves irregular hours and night shifts. I don't see him often, but I remember him as a kind person who always shows concern for my health whenever we meet. His compassionate wife, my sister-in-law, pleaded earnestly with Kyle. Jane isn't your servant, you know? As a spouse, shouldn't you have more empathy and care for your partner? Sorry, sis. I knew you were unwell back then, but I didn't realize it was for that reason. Kyle responded somewhat defensively, but his sister's expression remained stern. Forget about me right now. Shouldn't you be apologizing to Jane instead of me? When Kyle's beloved sister speaks firmly to him like this, he basically can't go against her words. Eventually, he seemed to give in and bowed his head to me. I'm sorry. My sister's words have made me realize things. From now on, I'll try to help Jane more. 
So let's get along, he said, looking into my eyes with a sincere tone. I thought he finally understood and was about to forgive him when I heard, Hold on a minute. It was my mother-in-law who intervened. She seemed tired from standing and, supported by my sister-in-law, approached and sat next to me on the sofa. Then, locking eyes with me, she said in a firm tone, Jean, don't take Kyle's words at face value. You should get a divorce quickly. What do you mean? I asked in surprise. My mother-in-law then shared a past experience. Actually, I suffered from similar symptoms around your age. Back then, there wasn't a name for menopausal symptoms. From what you've told me, I think I probably had menopause too. I've mentioned this before, haven't I? It seemed that when my mother-in-law was about my age, menopausal symptoms weren't widely recognized as a medical condition. There were no treatments available, and more importantly, it was hard to get understanding from those around her. My mother-in-law smiled wryly and then pointed at Kyle. Back then, Kyle was terrible to me when I was suffering. Then, it was around the time before he married you, I think. He was still living at home. And he would say heartless things like, hurry up with the meal, how long are you planning to sleep, stop pretending to be sick and such. My mother-in-law recounted, her face pained as if reliving those moments. Is that true? I asked Kyle, wanting to believe in him, but he awkwardly turned his face away. His silence and lack of denial meant that everything his mother said was true. His silence and lack of denial meant that everything his mother said was true. My mother-in-law looked down sadly. My late husband, your father-in-law, was so angry with Kyle's behavior back then that he hit him. And when your father-in-law scolded him harshly, Kyle said the same thing he's saying now, I've realized some things. Indeed, after that, Kyle stopped saying anything to me. That's because he soon married you and left the house. But Jane, you've been receiving terrible treatment from him, haven't you? It means Kyle hasn't changed at all over the years. Even after decades, he has no understanding of someone else's illness. She stated this matter-of-factly, asserting that Kyle's words were just excuses for the moment. No, wait. Please believe me. I won't do it again. Kyle tried to interject, but his sister grabbed his arm to stop him. I saw it all back then. That's why I hit you earlier, just like Dad did. Remember, after Dad scolded you, you cried and apologized to Mom. You said you'd never do it again. That you had woken up, that you were wrong. But now, you're doing the same thing to Jane that you did to Mom. Expecting us to believe you after doing it twice is too much. It's impossible to believe. His sister reasoned as such as Kyle bit his lip in frustration. As he fell silent, my mother-in-law grabbed my shoulders and said with a determined look, that's why you must divorce Kyle and escape as soon as possible. Otherwise, you'll continue to suffer. Now is your chance, with me and my daughter here. Alone with him, he will never admit his faults. He might even get angry for embarrassing him in front of his parents. It was heartbreaking to hear a mother say this about her son. The thought of divorce at this age was daunting, but hearing my mother-in-law's words, I felt it was impossible to continue with Kyle. No matter how badly I was treated, I always believed that once my symptoms eased, we could return to living happily together as before. But now I realize it would only be a brief respite before things got worse again. My anger also rose at the revelation of Kyle's past verbal abuse towards his mother. Fighting off my ongoing dizziness, I stood up and looked straight at Kyle to declare my intention to divorce. Kyle shook off his sister's hand and yelled, What the heck is everyone here ganging up to make me the bad guy? Everyone in the room looked at him with cold eyes. Realizing even his own family saw him this way, Kyle's face turned red with rage. Fine, I get it. If you all say so, then we'll get divorced. He agreed in a state of resentful anger. The dinner party was cancelled, and my mother-in-law went home while Kyle stayed at a hotel. Our divorce was finalized smoothly without any disputes over property division. Soon after separating from Kyle, I focused solely on recuperating alone. About half a year later I received a call from Kyle, with whom I hadn't been in contact at all since the split. I had moved out of our house, rented an apartment, and was living alone, while regularly visiting the hospital. Thankfully, my health had stabilized without the stress, but the call from Kyle gave me an uneasy feeling. When I answered the phone, my suspicion was confirmed. 
The call was filled with Kyle's utter selfishness. Kyle, who had a chronic illness, told me that it worsened after our divorce and living alone. However, Kyle always boasted that he had perfect control over his health management. He even used this to insult me, calling me lazy for not getting better and accusing me of not being serious about treatment. Why did it get like this? You always said you could manage your health perfectly, right? I retorted, though I knew the reason. Kyle's idea of managing his health was superficial at best. He simply chose what to eat from the balanced meals I prepared, nothing more. Originally, I decided on the menu considering Kyle's health, so he never had to cook from scratch. Moreover, Kyle, who never did any household chores, has been surviving on convenience store meals and retort pouches, only taking showers and not vacuuming at all in the past six months. His life quality plummeted with such an unhealthy diet and unhygienic living conditions. If this continues, I can't survive. That's why I want you to take care of me. It's been half a year. Your illness must be cured by now, right? Kyle said. Apparently he first turned to his sister, but she was overwhelmed with caring for their mother. After being refused because she couldn't manage any more responsibilities, Kyle contacted me out of desperation. I wanted to refuse too, but he was my husband for many years, after all. I wanted to ignore him, but Kyle said, then, at least come and look at the album that I found in the back of the closet. If you don't want it, I'll throw it away. I thought about the old photos and hesitated. Although I've lost patience now, back then, my relationship with Kyle was good, and there were photos with his mother and others. I decided to go and pick out only my part of the photos and visited our former home for the first time in a while. The house where we had lived together until six months ago looked dirtier than before, possibly due to lack of cleaning. Empty convenience store meal containers were left on the table and I couldn't help but frown. Without you, I don't have time to clean. And when I feel unwell, it's too much effort to move, Kyle said, making excuses even though I hadn't said anything. While Kyle claimed to be unwell, he appeared surprisingly energetic. Furthermore, despite talking about needing care, what Kyle really wanted was someone to clean, do laundry, and prepare meals. It just seemed like he wanted a housekeeper. After some thought, I said, You're not injured and you look fine. Why don't you stop slacking and take care of yourself? Kyle narrowed his eyes unhappily and retorted, You know my illness affects my internal organs and nerves, right? Don't judge by appearances I'm suffering so much, and yet you dare accuse me of slacking. He spat out those words. As I coldly stared at Kyle, he became visibly flustered. Then he suddenly froze. Kyle, with his eyes wide open, took a deep breath and bowed his head to me. That's what I said to you when you were suffering. I'm truly sorry, I deeply regret it and won't do it again, so please. Realizing what he was about to ask, I firmly interrupted. Sorry, but I can't take care of you. My menopausal symptoms aren't cured yet, and I can't trust your remorse. In a panic, Kyle prostrated himself before me without any regard for appearances. Please, I'm begging you. I really don't know when my condition might worsen and require hospitalization. I'm continuing medication, but a healthy diet is crucial, and I'm in trouble without you. Please, I'm desperate. Kyle's apology seemed to come from the heart. However, I had heard from his mother and others that this was just a performance. He does that to make it seem like you're the heartless one for not forgiving him, even though he's apologizing so earnestly. She had said this. Remembering her words, I slowly shook my head. In the end, I am too overwhelmed with my own issues to be able to care for someone else. If I were to live with Kyle again and care for him, it's clear that the stress would cause my menopausal symptoms to worsen again. Just when things were finally settling down, I would be back to square one. It's impossible. If you truly need care, please use home care services or a helper. I explained this to Kyle, who was pleading persistently. I made it clear once more that I could not provide care and had no intention of living together again and then returned to my life. Subsequently, my symptoms stabilized and I returned to work from my leave of absence. Though gradual, I started to resume work. There was a time when I considered resigning, but, but realizing I needed to earn a living on my own, I decided against it. 
Despite a gap of two years and a few months, returning to work was enjoyable, as I had always found fulfillment in my job. I have no intention of reconciling with Kyle or considering remarriage with anyone else at the moment. However, I still keep in touch with Kyle's family, occasionally dining together and maintaining our relationship. I learned that regular family dinners, a long-standing tradition in Kyle's family, had been discontinued after that last incident. Also, I heard that Kyle for some reason quit his job. He claimed it was to focus on treatment. But reportedly his frequency of hospital visits hasn't changed, nor has there been any improvement in his diet. Kyle seems to be financially stable for the time being, thanks to the money from his early retirement. However, he is reportedly living in fear of an uncertain future due to his ongoing health battle. As for me, I intend to continue valuing my health and aim to live a fulfilling life for the remainder of my days.